My name is Tamara, and this is episode 45 of the Caffeinated Craft Mamas podcast. My podcast all about my knitting, crocheting, and bookish life in Southwest Missouri, where I live with my partner Richard, our three kids, and our dog. Hope you all are doing well. It has been three weeks since I have talked to you guys last. Today is Wednesday, September 4th. It is about 7 p.m. in the evening. My kids are with my mom at church, so I thought I would go ahead and get an episode recorded, even though this one will be a short one because I don't have a lot to show. That's okay. Um, going back to work has been more than I expected it to be, and my crafting time has been about this much. So I actually have gotten a few things done, but not nearly what I was hoping. So. If you would like to follow me on social media, please feel free to do so. I'm active over on Instagram as the caffeinated underscore craft underscore mama. And then I also have an Etsy shop now, CCM bags. You can click the link down below in the description box that will take you straight to the shop. I do have some bags in there, not as many as I wanted because a few have sold, which is great. And hopefully I will get a few, um, Akatar themed bags in there in the next couple of weeks. We'll see when those get done. All right, so I have a gift I want to show you guys. I have two, okay, I have one finished object and one sort of finished object. And then I have three whips to talk about. So not a ton, but better than I, honestly better than I should have anticipated. So first of all, I want to show you guys this gorgeousness. And I will have to pop the name of the pattern in here. Actually, no, it goes this way. Sorry. So, crafty friends, guys, make the best friends, in case you didn't know. Um, my friend Amber, Ambie Marie Knits, if you don't watch her, you should. She's here on YouTube. Um, knit this shawl. And I knew it wasn't her colors and she just likes to knit things to knit things. And she brought this to me after my first week of school and told me that she just thought I might need a hug. And she's right. And so, um, you know, it's just, it's perfect guys. It's beautiful. And you can watch her episode to find out what these colors are. Like I said, I'll put the name of the pattern down here. I forgot. Um, I do need to get finished object photos for Amber for this but it is the squishiest, the softest, and the most lovable shawl ever. And I am so grateful for it. And she made me cry um, when she brought it to me because I had had a really rough first week. And, um, you know, it just made me feel really loved and really supported. So we're not gonna get too far into it because I'll probably get teary-eyed again. Um, but yeah, so this is my gift and what I'll be wearing today. All right, my first finished object is a pair of socks. I did not lack much on these socks last time you guys saw them. They are my Eureka Spring socks. They are pretty much identical. I got this yarn from the Yarn Adventure Truck in Eureka Springs, Arkansas when I went with my mom and Amber to the um, Fiber Festival down there, first one I've ever been to. So that is a fun memory. Um, with these and I knit these toe up on a US one nine inch mill or yeah, nine inch circular needle. Um, I did my normal heel flap and gusset and then I did a 50 row leg and a 20 row cuff. So these will be a little bit longer than my normal socks. And I think this is going to be my new sock recipe. Yes, it eats up a little bit more yarn, but I like how much farther up my leg it goes. Tends to stay in my jeans a little better. Not that I've gotten to wear them much. Um, but I am going to wait to knit myself any more socks. Um, but I'm thinking this will be the sock recipe going forward. So there's those. Next up, guys, drum roll. I have Pippin is done. This is the Pippin block from the Fellowship of the Rings blanket by Swish and Stitch. Lucinda is the um, designer. This has been a whip for 18 months, two years, something like that. Um, and all I lack on this block is weaving in the ends. I did not get those woven in, but all the crocheting 
on every block is done. So I will have the ends woven in and my hope is the next time I talk to you guys, no, let me, let me, let me take that back. If not the next time I talk to you guys, then the time after I will have this blanket completed. That is my hope. All I have left to do is put the blocks together and put a border on it. So I am super excited and proud of myself for getting this block done. Um, work has eaten all my brain power, I guess would be the easiest way to say that. Um, so I have not been able to come home and have, have a lot of functional brain space left, especially after I get my kids to bed. Um, by the time I get the kids to bed, my brain looks like overcooked ramen, I feel like. That's how it feels. My brain is just overcooked ramen and I can't, I can't count guys. So the fact that I was able to get that block finished and it was correct is awesome. And I am really proud of myself for getting that done. So those are my two finished ish objects. Drink of water. And I have three whips to talk about. One of which you have seen. So we'll start with that one and two that are new to you. So my first whip is living in my Star Wars bag that I got from uh, Get Your Yarn Wishes. Granted, I did a swap with somebody, so it was fun. And this is just my corner to corner, scrappy, granny square, I need to knit but can't function blanket. Guys, when I say that this was the project I needed without knowing I needed it, I had no idea. Um, we touched on this last week, but this year has been a rough start, um, for me. And, um, this has just been the blanket that I have looked forward to picking up. I'm grateful for, and I know that when I complete it, it's going to be the blanket I reach for the most. So it is using my, my precious stitch marker, stitch markers by Andy the Nitrous. I think she still has those up in her shop. They were the Lord of the Rings set I talk about all the time because this is my precious. So it needed the my precious stitch, stitch marker. So yeah, I've gotten mm, two and a half inches, two inches done. Not too bad considering this is all I knit on the first week I went back to work when we had students come. Last time I saw you guys was the day before I had students. Um, so that first week, this was literally the only knitting I touched, um, which is fine because it was all I had brain space for. So I will move that marker up and I am getting ready to start. So I have two magic knot balls. Why I made magic knot balls, I'm not really sure because I don't typically trust magic knots. So my plan is to take these, I, I mean, some of this stuff is like OG when Tamara started knitting, like when I started knitting socks. So let's see, that would have been nine years ago. Some of that, some of this in the middle of this one, especially is probably like Tamara just started knitting socks, doesn't even know what 75, 25 yarn is. Um, you know, or 80, 20 or, you know, so who knows what I'm going to find when I get into these. Um, but the plan is when I get to a magic knot, I'm either going to decide if I want to cut that magic knot out and just have the loose ends, or if I'm just going to put a dot of fray check on that magic knot and move on. We'll see what I feel like doing in the moment. Who knows? And I still have I'd say about a third of my first ball of the Cascade Re Refine. And it is 75% um, 75% merino wool, 25 20% nylon, 5% viscose, and it's all recycled material. So there is that bit of loveliness. I'll show you one more time. 
it's just going to be, I can't even decide if I'm just going to make it a giant square or if I am going to try to make it a rectangle. We'll see where, it, how I feel when I get there. Um, but it's going to just be squish. Mm, I'm so excited and I love it. So that two inches was probably the first week and a half of work. Um, and then when I was at work, I get 30 minutes for lunch. And so when I finished my Eureka spring socks, I did start a new pair of socks. These are my purse socks. The yarn is mint rain yarn in the colorway platform nine and three quarters. I've had this in stash for a long time, but I really like mint rain yarn. She is a wonderful dyer. And this is what I have so far. So I am about halfway through the gusset increases, I believe. And I, I can't decide on these. Um, if, okay, a little bit of backstory. My sister's birthday is coming up at the end of the month and I was knitting her a pair of birthday socks. She's a big Harry Potter fan. Okay, great. But the more I look at these, the more they look like a pair of Chiefs socks. I'm the Chiefs fan. Football. I'm the Chiefs fan. She's the Bengals fan. These are not Bengals colors. So I texted her and asked her if she thought that they were two Chiefs colors. And she said, not really. So I think I will go ahead and make these for her and finish them. Um, just because her birthday's at the end of the month and I really don't want to... I don't want to miss out on making her birthday socks because I've made her birthday socks for the last several years. Um, and that's something that I want to keep up with um, without stressing myself out too much. So there's those. Let me wind these up. Knitting these on a US one. Typically for gift socks, I do US one. For socks for myself, I do a US zero. All right, last project. So, when Tamara is stressed, sometimes she thinks she needs something else on her plate. Why in the world I think that, I don't know. But this is not the first time I've done something like this to myself. So, it was the second week of school. I was not having a good week. And Jamie Lomax posted that she needed test knitters for the dinosaur doodle cow. So I messaged Emily of Fangirl Fibers. I said, hey, I was wondering if you need a sample knitter for the dinosaur cow. She says, sure, absolutely. Let me send you the yarn. So first, I want to show you guys the yarn. I don't have uh, color names because they didn't come with ball bands. So there's this really dark hunter green. There's a natural color. There's like a neon salmon color. There's a hot pink. There is a neon purple. There is like a neon navy, for lack of a better word. And neon greenish yellow. So that was what she sent me. And I, I'm a, I've got about six and a half inches done so far. So I will show you what I have. So I've got some Brachiosaurus type ones, some fossil bones, and these are pterodactyls in here. And I'm starting some Stegosaurus right now. Um, it has been a fun knit so far, um, very interesting for me. Um, I always thought of myself as super creative and you know, very off the wall. Um, I'm not as creative as I thought I was, you guys. Meaning that I'm having a hard time with the neon colors for dinosaurs. Um, 
I still kind of want to stay in my lane of, you know, eggs are one color and dinosaurs are green and, you know, all that. So this has challenged my brain a little bit, um, which isn't a bad thing at all. But it's just challenged me to figure out what to knit. So yeah, so I'm doing this Stegosaurus chart right now. And I have been working on this as much as I can. Um, and I'm going to have to message Emily, I think, because this is supposed to be done on the 17th. And I don't think it will because, or that it will be done because when my brain is overcooked ramen, I can't even count to eight, you guys. I have had to tink back multiple times because I've messed up. Thankfully, I'm, I like to put my stitch markers in each section, so I'm counting, and then I realize, oh, wait a minute, I've messed up. Um, but I've had to tink back so much that I would probably have another half an inch on that cowl if I could just count correctly. And it's just because I'm so tired. So I think I'm going to just shoot Emily a message and be honest. Um, I always feel like that's the best and just say, hey, I will get this done. I am working on it, but it just may take me a little longer than I was anticipating. Um, cause I don't have free time anymore. <laughs> um, so I guess we can just use that as a segue into life and junk. Um, I guess I do have one book to talk about. So if you're just here for the knitting and the yarn, that's it. And I will see you hopefully in two weeks with a little bit more progress on some things. Um, so I am listening to one book. I am listening to Moon Called by Patricia Briggs. I'm about 45% of the way done with the book. So far I'm liking it. I had to put a stop on Zodiac for a little bit. Again, because of my brain. I was just having a hard time keeping track of all of the characters and all of the backstories and everything that was going on. Um, so I'm hoping to read a few of this series, Amber recommended it, and then possibly picking Zodiac back up after that. Um, I was just having a hard time and I didn't want to get confused and I wasn't enjoying listening to it or reading it because I just couldn't keep up with who was what and who was supposed to be where and when and um especially because that Zodiac series that I'm reading now part of it takes place 18 months before the other part so it can be a little confusing um so yeah we'll get back to Zodiac Academy soon so I am listening to Moon Called. I will hopefully have that done. And I already have the second book on hold on Libby for audio. Um, I have about a 20 minute commute and then I get to work about 10 minutes early so I can knit for a few minutes in the parking lot, kind of psych myself up for the day. And so I, I have about 30 minutes that I can listen to a book on my way to work and on my way home. So that's kind of nice. Though I typically don't sit in my car for 10 minutes on the way home. I just am focused on getting home. So work has been, like I said, a lot more challenging than I was anticipating. Um, but good too. Good too. I have really been focusing on finding joy in each day. Finding joy in my students. And finding joy in um, some of my coworkers. And that has been wonderful. Um, and I love my kids already. There are some of them that, you know, I already just, I know at the end of the year, I'm gonna be so sad when I send them on to their next adventure. Um, some of them I will wave at and tell you, see you later, love you. Um, but some of them I really will, really will miss. Um, but it was a lot more than I was anticipating it being. And I kid you not, I have finished the day every day um, with at least 12 to 13,000 steps a day. I was barely getting 10,000 in the first two weeks before school started. And that's only because I was making myself do it. So it's a lot more on my feet. It's a lot more running around. I have kiddos who run out of the room randomly. 
I have kiddos with very limited communication skills, so I have a few biters. I have some hitters. I've got, um, you know, some kids are out for therapy. Some kids are unable to quite go to the bathroom by themselves yet. I have some kids that are still in diapers. So, and I, it's not my classroom. I'm the support teacher in this room. So routines and procedures that I would put in place aren't my responsibility um, and aren't, I've put a few in place. I've kind of put my foot down and been like, okay, we are doing this, we are doing this. Um, but for the most part, that's not my responsibility and that's not my job to overstep my teacher by taking over those things. And being the oldest sibling, I have a tendency to do that. I have a tendency to walk in and say, hey, you're not doing this right. I'm going to show you how you should be doing it. Um, and that has been kind of a kick in the butt that, hey, you can't do that now. This is this teacher's room. Um, so it has been a good learning experience for me and a growing experience for me. Um, and I have not cried when I came home from work this week. So that's good. Um, I am feeling a lot more upbeat this week. I think part of that is because we have put out our fall decorations. I have embraced the pumpkin spice. I am finding way to find small joys throughout my day. And like I said, sometimes that's just a hug from one of my kids or, um, them listening to a one step direction after I've only asked them three times. <laughs> so um, it is a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work too. So that is why my brain has just not been in a good place to be doing a lot of knitting. So going forward, at least for September and October, basic knitting is going to be the plan. I have a couple of things on the horizon that I'm going to start working on. Um, the Lord of the Rings blanket will be done. Let me grab a drink. And then one of my cousins is having a baby. So I have yarn left from a blanket that I crocheted for her. So I'm going to do a miniature version of the blanket I crocheted for her, for her baby. I also have a friend who's having a baby. So there will be several baby knits coming up. Um... My sister's birthday is coming up and my mom's birthday is coming up. So I'd like to try to get socks done for both of those. Really, if I tried, I can knit a pair of socks in a weekend if I really need to. But my main focus right now is that dino cowl and finishing the Lord of the Rings blanket. Those are my two main goals. Once I get past those, we can deal with everything else. So yeah, I guess I'm just kind of rambling now. Um... You know what, guys? If you're still here and you're a reader, tell me some of your feel-good fantasy series. They don't have to be romance. I would prefer they were romance, but they don't have to be. Um, I do enjoy my smut books. You guys know that. Um, but just give me some of your feel-good, don't require a lot of brain space to follow, maybe a little predictable fantasies or urban fantasies or anything like that. Um, I would love a list. Because most of the things on my TBR list are intense or really long series or 500 pages. And I just don't have this, this the brain space for that right now. So, yeah. If you guys want to drop me a note, that would be awesome. Otherwise, I will see you guys in two weeks. Bye.